Redux Show. Ever thought how words most love applications are created? The Redux Show lifts up the mood and explores the magic that made these applications great. The Redux Show. Hello guys, welcome to the first episode of the Redux Show. This is a podcast by Palo IT. I think this is a journey that we are going to start today and going for a lot of episodes in the future. But no matter how many episodes are there, everyone will come back to this episode and see how it all started. And today we are going to talk about an interesting uh, topic. I think throughout this series we will be talking about a lot of tech that inspired us as software engineers. This is not only about the tools and technologies that we use day to day, but also some of the products uh, that uh, inspired us, that made us go wow. And we will have a look at those products in a reverse engineering perspective. The idea came when we had some reverse engineering sessions where we looked at some of prominent products and see how these products came to be. Today I have with me Nobel who uh, did a research about Netflix design and we are going to talk about Netflix. Of course we are going to talk about Netflix. But before that I think it's better that you introduce yourself Nobel. Right. So hi guys. Um my name is Nobel. Uh, I'm from Palo IT, a software engineer. Um, so what we do is that we are sent into different organizations as consultants and we help the organization grow in the digital world. And my name is Tarandu Vishwanath. I will be your host. Throughout this series of podcasts, you will see other hosts as well. This will not be a one man or two man show. You will see a lot of Palawans coming to talk about their experience working at Palo IT, their experience working in the tech industry. I think taking Netflix as the first episode of our podcast is an interesting idea because Netflix is not only just a product that is relevant in the tech industry. Right. It broke it broke through some of the barriers and reach mass audience and it has become part of their day to day life it has become a verb netflix and chill that's mm-hmm. what people call of course there are other streaming services fighting to uh, get the dominance but netflix will always be that first love of everyone who loves streaming but that also means netflix had to solve a lot of problems that was not there before uh, nobel i will ask you uh first why did you think uh talking about netflix and it architecture is a good start for our podcast series well um i think that because netflix is um a popular application where everybody knows about it um most of uh, the people around the world would have heard of it or used it before so it's something that we can start with um so it's easier for people to digest and understand because we already know like how Netflix work so that's why we decided like let's do this for the first episode and see where we go with it exactly nobel i think uh, so many things that we discuss in the podcast even if you are a non tech listener mm-hmm. you will still understand what we are talking about or you will get a light bulb uh flashing in your head oh okay this is how they are doing it but first of all we need to put our foundation the baseline we cannot of course cover everything that is relevant to netflix design so we will be looking at some of the key features i think it will be really interesting to discuss like what are some of the challenging problems that netflix solved especially the challenges that was not solved uh, by a previous streaming platform that was very unique to Netflix. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's look into that. Um so when we talk about Netflix, um people always think of like a huge collection or library of movies and videos where you can stream on demand uh as and when you like as long as you have an internet connection and it's super fast like you click on it the video starts loading and you can get your movie going. So how do we actually do that for Netflix? Um basically they need a huge storage where they gonna store all their collection of movies and series and then they will have 
have like a search function where people can look for videos and 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 we have like a recommendation list according to the search like what comes up um do we have that kind of movie and if not Netflix is going to show you like some recommendations to similar kind of movies so those are the things that um Netflix has enhanced mm. and it's providing a very good uh, user experience for now yeah, yeah. Uh, but when netflix started the streaming services mm-hmm. of course they came as a streaming platform for movies and tv series there were some other streaming platforms available like youtube was available they mm-hmm. all they were also streaming videos but still the scale in which netflix had to operate was larger than uh, youtube so there were other challenges that they had to face like what do you think were the main challenges compared to existing streaming platforms well i think one of them is to secure their libraries of videos mm. um they have to get license for it um and you cannot allow people to download it entirely and that has to be secure because otherwise it becomes piracy right mm. um so i think that was the main challenge and they really did a good job in fighting that and it helps um the community to um accept on paying for videos and movies and then that's when the piracy um drops down a lot uh in in the internet so you talked about the storage and when we talk about storage that means uh, hundreds and thousands of movies and tv series in a single place so when uh, from an end user's perspective these movies can reside in a single location but that's not how the data distribution works let's talk about the storage how how is netflix handling this problem when we think about netflix and reverse engineering this application um first thing that comes to mind is that now we have a lot of cloud services we have microsoft azure google cloud um but for this example let's look at aws um aws provides us with a storage service mm. where we can store our files on the cloud and it's called aws s3 storage mm-hmm. so um this This service that AWS provides us allow us to upload um huge files and then it's going to be super fast to upload um and that's why when when we think about Netflix that's something we want uh, when we buy the movies we want to store it like super fast you know we don't want to wait for too long and it also allow us to retrieve the file when the user wants to view it Yeah that's an interesting perspective about the the tech industry also because Amazon has their own streaming platform which we call Amazon Prime yeah. but that doesn't mean uh, they are competitors like uh, when Amaz- uh, when Netflix need their content to be stored they have to get the support of um, mm-hmm. Amazon and I think Amazon is helping some other major players also to have their storage in their place mm-hmm. but is the cloud the only place the netflix is storing uh, their files or do they have their own uh, premises or do they store their some of their library with uh, internet service providers also oh yes yeah they do so like they store their most popular titles uh, movies like you see on the top 10 list and things like that they store it with the internet service providers mm-hmm. so when people um try to connect they go through an s- internet service provider yeah. and they don't have to reach out to Netflix yeah. uh, data storage they can just immediately take it from there mm-hmm. and so that um cuts down the latency and what about the the storing technologies does that means these files saved as entire files or is there any other trick the Netflix using uh to make the data transfer more efficient so looking at the streaming services mm-hmm. um if you are a user you you would have noticed that you can click on any part of the movie and you would jump mm-hmm. and then you can immediately view it after a few seconds which is super fast and how they do that is that netflix breaks down the file into a uh, small little segments mm-hmm. and they convert it into a format where you can do that so every time you go to a certain timing in the movie or the video mm-hmm. um it downloads that exact segment only and it can be super fast 
just because it's just a small segment and it loads further ahead like a few seconds more so you don't have a, you you would have a smooth like uh, viewing experience yeah i think that makes sense because otherwise uh, if we start to watch an episode of uh, let's say witcher we will have to wait about 5 or 10 minutes until the the entire file get downloaded yeah. but in this way you can straight away start a uh, we- viewing experience and then later on the the rest of files will come into the play mm-hmm. now when we started the episode we also discuss about the search function i think one of the most interesting thing about netflix search is it doesn't only recommend the titles available with them uh, they will even recommend things that they not available with them so for example if i search harry potter it's not a title that belongs to netflix for some reasons but mm-hmm. still they will recommend it and then when you search it they will show some other results like for example if i search for game of thrones it will not show me game of thrones but it will show other titles like witcher and maybe shadow and bone so what what are the uh, what are the most interesting thing about the search function of netflix when you use a search function it might seem like a simple utility yeah. but looking at that like you mentioned if netflix doesn't have the uh, title with them they do actually give you some recommendations that are similar to the the movie that you want to watch mm. so basically how that works is that netflix actually stores like um metadata of like the different videos and those can include like the sub category the genre mm. uh the different um uh, different kind of viewers who view it like you they collect a lot of data mm. so uh for example if like a lot of user view this video and then they also watch another movie mm. so that movie gets recommended when people search for this yeah. so that's why when as soon as we complete some movie then a uh, uh, a different title will be recommended yeah but you mentioned metadata uh so the storage do they use uh, aws for this or how how do they store this uh, metadata so looking at aws uh, s3 mm. we can store the metadata with the files when you upload the file to be in the storage mm. so and when you do a search or you do a list of all the files that you have on your uh, s3 bucket mm. you can actually just get the metadata without downloading the entire file mm. so this kind of speeds up the process mm. because um the metadata is just a really small file that's in like kilobytes mm. and you can actually get the details that you need and uh give give the user the feedback mm. like um the the movie titles and things like that whether you have it or not we talked about aws i think cloud services are getting more and more helpful for every business now from netflix side what they are doing uh, to make this experience very useful it was clear from what you explained earlier mm-hmm. but what are some of the other advantages or benefits that aws provide uh, to make the service seamless when you upload the video into your s3 storage we have this um aws service called element media convert mm-hmm. so that um automatically converts your video file into different formats mm-hmm. and uh stores it in the s3 bucket mm-hmm. so whenever you need it you can just um grab it and in the format that you want so it's going to be really fast and one thing that uh this service provides as well it converts it into a hls format so what is hls it's http live streaming format so like i've discussed with you earlier mm. we have um the 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 function where netflix cuts the video into small segments mm. so this format does that for them mm. yeah any other um services like uh, we talked about how they use uh, s3 but this uh, s3 would be in some sort of availability zone i have also heard there are some edge locations or cache locations so is it uh, something that netflix is uh, using or aws helping netflix to do like caching in edge locations Yeah that's definitely uh, something that Netflix is doing so um with CloudFront mm. we can use um that to front our S3 bucket and content to um the entire world because um 
right now Netflix is available everywhere, right? Mm, yeah. And different countries might be able to see certain movies, and other countries might be able to see other movies. Mm. So all this can be done with CloudFront, mm. where um it gives you an edge location in different regions of the world, mm. and when people tries to connect and get the content, um, Cloud CloudFront actually cache um the 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 video files uh, on that region so that it reduces the latency when uh, people try to get the content. Yeah. So that means, uh, let's say, for example, um, if India is closer to some um, edge location, that means the most popular content in that region will be cached, and any other subsequent request will be served very without much of uh, delay. Yeah. Uh, so we. Now here we are in the territory of the latency, and for a application which stream videos, which serves video files, the latency is very important. The user experience is very important. Mm -hmm. So now I think from what we discuss, it's clear how it is done. But are there any other techniques that's been used to uh, tackle the this issue to make the video streaming more efficient? Yes, uh, there are. So if you have realized, and if you are a user of Netflix, you have to have realized that in some cases where your internet is a bit slower, mm. um, and Netflix actually has a sort of a timeout mm. to detect that, and when it reaches that timeout, it automatically changed and then tries to download a content with a lower quality. Yep. So when that happens, it speeds up the process because a lower quality video is going to be much smaller. Yep. So um, that is going to improve the latency it improves. It allows you to view the video, of course, not in the best quality, but you get the content. Hmm. So that means uh, for any video file, uh, a movie or a TV series episode, uh, in the in that S3 bucket that we you mentioned, mm -hmm. there will be files in different resolutions. That's that was happening behind the scene, or. Is it something that happens on the fly? Like uh, there is a service which reduce the quality. What's the path they have taken? It's not really on the fly. So yeah. what happens is when the movie comes in and gets uploaded to the S3 bucket, like uh, I have mentioned this uh, service before, yeah. which is the media convert. Yeah. So that is automatically going to convert those uh, into the formats mm -hmm. as well as different qualities. Yeah. So um, as and when you require it, you can just grab it and it will be able available. Okay. Nobel, I think in this uh, small amount of time, we talked about some of the prominent features about Netflix. All the listeners must be eager to find out more. And I request you to read the blog post within uh, the link uh, with the description and you will see a lot of details about the Netflix design and what we found out. Nobel, before we end the show, any last thought or anything that you want to share with the audience? All right, thank you guys for tuning in to the first episode of The Redux Show. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe to our channel and uh, we will see you in the next podcast. Thank you. I think we are in for a good start. We will see you in the next episode.